Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, mm. Stanley. All right, y'all know what time it is. It's Power Book 4, Force, Episode 2, King of the God, Don't no. Him Ill. Yeah, man. Last week, we mentioned to you all that anytime you see a t-shirt on us, more than likely, it's going to be from Power in Black. We're big on supporting black business. Yeah. But we're also in the business of helping you all save a coin. Yes, so indeed. So y'all been loving the hell out of that 25% off. Use my code, Lynette. L-Y-N-E-T-T-E, -E -T -T -E, buy you up some shirts. My husband has on one today. So let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. All right, first of all, this was a really good episode this week. We can mm -hmm. see that basically we're still building upon the new characters that's been introduced this season. And we see Tommy still making boss moves because we know now that he wanted to run his own organization. All right, so this week's episode starts off and we see T Tommy on his phone looking at pictures of Keisha and Cash. So in the midst of him checking out the pictures of them, he gets a call from his brother JB because JB's bar had just got shot up. We know Tommy is all about family, so of course he gonna run to his brother's rescue. He gets over there and be like, whoever you got on payroll for security, you need to file. And is this place a front? You can take <laughs> yeah. you can take Tommy out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of Tommy. Tommy's like, wait a minute, <laughs> this don't look right. And it J didn't look right. And JB was like, no, is what the problem is that me and my sick father own this place and he has medical bills and his medical bills is cleaning me out. So Tommy was like, why you didn't call any family? He was like, I don't have any family. And the ones that I did have that was my ex-husband, he ain't gonna take no phone calls from me. And is that me having an ex-husband? Is that going to be a problem for you? And Tommy was like, no. An ex is an ex. An ex is an ex. <laughs> but the way Tommy had that lean back on his heels, like, okay. I was like, is this going to be a problem for you, Tommy? Because I'm about ready to read you real quick. But Tommy was like, oh, uh, ex is a motherfucking ex. I'm, I'm good with it. Tommy gives him 10 grand and says, I need to go because I know where to make more money at with this money. So in this episode, we see um, Walter Flynn, the father, right? He gets a phone call from his oncologist. And the oncologist was like, listen, bro, we, we need to talk. We need to talk about this blood work, these numbers, all of that. He knows what his fate is. And at the end of the day, let's just go ahead and keep running this business because I'm planning for my exit and I need my son to step up and do what he's supposed to do. But we all know that his son ain't ready. He, I mean, right. Vic ain't ready for this, for this life. Nope. But the sister Claudia... She has ideas and ambitions, but because she's a female, the men in the family is like, oh, hell no, you can't do it. Stay, pretty much they'll tell her, stay in a woman's place and whatnot. So Claudia has a conversation with Vic and was telling Vic, like, listen, we gonna have to do something a little differently. Like these, we have some new drugs out here. We can actually get this into our organization and make a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. That ain't gonna listen to me. So why don't you just go ahead and pitch the idea to him so we see that there was a gathering of Claudia, Walter, and Vic in an office. And Claudia was kind of looking at Vic like, so the idea of you pitching yeah. this idea, there's new drugs to daddy, you ain't about to do it. Buck it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> she ended up bringing it up to, um, to Walter. And Walter was like, listen. Every couple of years, some new dealer comes out with some new stuff, introduces it to the streets, and it pans out not to be shit. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what we got going on right now is dependable. Mm -hmm. So, of course, at this point, we know that the daddy ain't going to go for it, but we do know that Claudia is ambitious. Claudia is going to figure out a way to do this thing behind her daddy's back. So Claudia was telling him, say, listen, we got these money problems that can help our money problems. The daddy told her, listen, I don't know why you keep forcing yourself into rooms that don't want you. Yeah, I was like, damn. Fix these books, do what it is that you do well, and stay the buck from out of my face. And then he said, because Vic is the one that runs the streets. Janari wants Diamond to meet these dudes outside that's supposed to be these stone cold killers. Diamond was like, I don't want nothing to do with them because they are bad for business. So Janelle was like, well, things are different since you've been locked up for 15 years. Things move a lot quicker out here. Dom was like, no, if these dudes pull the trigger with this pray and spray BS, that ain't gonna look good for me. I don't care how long I've been locked up. That's not good. So we see Tommy is actually on his way to the barber shop to return the money and the drugs to them. But he runs into... <laughs> Liliana, yo. And she comes up and hits Tommy upside the head with a gun. Slice him up with a knife because she thinking that 
He done found her in the city, so she was caught herself trying to get one up on him before he got a one up on her. So while in the midst of them arguing back and forth, the police pulls up, so they end up parting ways. But Tommy looked down at his dang old leather coat that she had sliced, <laughs> and he did a, a he did a ninja move. This is why we can't have and nice then, things. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Tommy, don't play. You've been around black people too. God, no law for this. <laughs> So Tommy goes to the barber shop and returns the drugs and the money from last week back to Janard. So Diamond was like, why in the hell did you come back and return that? Because I didn't know where you were. And Tommy was like, because I, I didn't get into this game to snatch change and pick pockets. So Janard was like, man, you stupid. I would at least kept the money. So Tommy was getting ready to leave. And the dude Elijah didn't want him to leave. So Tommy had to end up grabbing him by his nick. And then the dudes that was outside... End up running in and pointing the gun at Tommy. So Diamond was like, hey, this is my spot. Y'all need to put them guns down. But they didn't listen to Diamond. They was waiting for Jannard to give them the call. So I said, so incident right struggle. there. That's their yeah, power struggle right there. That's going to be a problem. Diamond was the head of CBI before he got locked up. But now Jannard is in control. So these dudes ain't fit to listen to him. To you. Tommy and Diamond decided to go take a walk. So while Diamond and Tommy was walking... He said, I heard that you did the same thing for the Flynn family. Are you trying to make friends? And Tommy tell him again, no, nah, I ain't trying to make no friends. <laughs> I'm out in these streets trying to make money, and I'm trying to make these moves. But in the midst of them <laughs> talking, we see, we see this car roll up on them. So who the hell is this? And come to find out, these, these are the Ruha men roll up and kidnap him <laughs> and Diamond. But we was like the dude that rolled up. I said, what is French <laughs> And remember last week we saw that when Diamond was getting out of prison, that y'all know the YouTuber Jay Moore, which we figured that out after we watched it. Yeah, I kept saying yeah, he was, I was so like, familiar. Yeah, and then somebody in the comments was like, I was like, God dang, I didn't even put the two and two yeah, together. So we believe that was the call that that he made in order for the Rujas to pick up Diamond. And the deal is that they want them to sell their drugs in the street. So because Diamond caused their man to end up in a wheelchair, what they want him to do is they need him to sell all eight of their bricks. And Diamond was like, we can't do that now because the streets are hot, hot, hot with the cops. And he was like, that's the reason why we want you to sell it. And if you don't sell it, your body's going to end up dead in the streets. Now we see Diamond and see Diamond and Tommy in the car. And they having a bonding moment. They, I swear. Yeah, so... <laughs> Diamond is still trying to figure out Tommy's angle. He was like, I know you're not the police, so what are you trying to get out of all this? And Tommy was like, I'm just, again, I'm just trying to make the money. And matter of fact, after we do this job, because you helped me out of jam, I'm going to help you out of jam. You just break me off a little something, and we can part ways. Do we have a deal? So they were getting to riding, so they got to talking about them doing their first deal. Well, you know, they sold their first dime bag and got their first I said, $10. What is this bromance going on here? Yeah. <laughs> but we come to find out in this scene that basically Diamond revealed that his brother wants to get everything fast, but Diamond is trying to make him realize that you got to get this stuff slow because you got to be slow so you can see the angles. I'm looking at Diamond and I'm like, you came out with your clipper set and you just wanted to do everything legit. Diamond has not been on the streets for a good week. Yeah. And he already got He got break. snatched back in the game. But how about the fact that he driving time because the first of all, yeah, I, feel, yeah. <laughs> I feel some kind of way right now. Like... <laughs> We don't let anybody touch the Mustang. He yeah. wouldn't even let Tariq, Tariq sit on which it. is a nephew to him, yeah. lean on his car. And you got this whole driving it. I said, y'all look real big up in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we know that um, Diamond and Tommy only got three hours to get these drugs done. So in the midst of them going, doing the drops, we see that the guy that kidnapped them was talking to their boss. And he was like, I see Jannard, so I'm going to kidnap Jannard to basically up the ante, up the stakes, so that Tommy and them can it. get this thing done in three hours. So they end up kill, um, kidnapping Jannard. But there was one scene in particular when they was doing their drops was when the police officer rolled up on <sighs> Diamond and wanted Diamond to reach in the glove compartment to get his registration. But Diamond was like, I'm not going to take my hands off the wheel, in which we know what that's about, that... We can't make no false moves in front of the police because that's going to be our life. So he knew that if he went to reach for something, that that cop was going to shoot him. him. Thank God for white privilege in this case. Yeah. So thank God that Tommy came out there and the cop 
actually listened to Tommy, took Tommy's license and registration to let them go. And but Donald, Tommy turned into a white boy real quick. Yeah, he did. He was like, officer, officer, <laughs> is there a problem with my car? Yeah. I'm in the red zone. Like, the, you know, it's part. Like, what's going on? So thank God for Tommy in that moment because um, Donald was like, I could see after being in prison for 13 years, for 15 years, nothing, nothing changed. has changed in the streets. So now Tommy and Diamond done finished the drops. They done got Jannard back. <laughs> and Tommy gets broken off with 25000 Diamond asked Tommy, was like, you know what? What's your angle? Because I know you you ain't coming with me just for backup. Are you clocking my city? And Tommy was like, what if I am? So Tommy basically went on all the drops with Diamond so he can figure out where all the drops at uh -huh. so he can start his organization. He was a student. Yes. So that's why he let him drive that car. Because he was even Diamond was like, I noticed that your head was on a swivel the entire time. Yes. So everything that he did, every move he made, calculated. Yep. Now we can see that Diamond is real impressed by Tommy's um, close attention to details. Because he was like, at one point in the episode, Tommy called him David. And Diamond was like, how do you know my name was David? He was oh, like, ah, I know you looked at my barber's license. Yeah. I'm wondering now, because David is really liking Tommy and liking the way that Tommy moved, are they going to eventually work together in some type of way? So in this episode, right, we figured out the angle between Vic and Gloria. Like, we knew that there was some history going on, but we really didn't know how deep it went. Like, yeah. is she an ex? Is she a current? Like, what's what's the deal? Well, come to find out that Vic really does love Gloria. Mm -hmm. And Gloria also loves Vic. But here's the problem. Because Vic comes from this Flynn family and they are Irish, they have to keep the bloodline pure. Yeah. So him being with Gloria... Big no-no. He has to marry an, another Irish woman so that they can have an Irish son that could continue on with the Irish legacy. So Vic is telling Gloria, like, basically, when my father is on his dying bed and when he's he's going on to glory or to hell, whichever one he's going to, we can change some things up. Yeah. Like, we okay. really can run away, do what we need to do. And Gloria was telling him, you know, at the end of the day, I love you because you're just so... Loyal. Loyal, but at the same time... That's your downfall, too. If we run away, they're not going to do anything but find us. Yep. And the daddy already told uh, Vic early in the episode, if you don't do things the Irish way, then that's your fate. Like, yeah. you gonna, they going to kill you. So now we knew that Tommy was not going to let the Ruhas get away with kidnapping him. <laughs> I wouldn't even. Yeah, he wasn't going to. So he done went and to kidnap them and throw them in their own trunk and set the goddamn car on fire. With Jameson. With Jameson. How a, what a way to get somebody back. Say, God darn. Then he goes back over to the barbershop where Jannar, Diamond, and Elijah is and shows them the shirt. From French Montana. <laughs> it says, now y'all owe me again. But they were looking at him like, man, who is this? Who is this white boy? And what does he want? Yeah. <laughs> so Tommy goes back over to the bar and he talks to Gloria. And Gloria lets him know that she's been she's been inspired for years to want to start her own Jamaican spot. But she can't afford to. So she's chosen this bar that has a small kitchen in the back that keeps her inspired. And so when she told Tommy that she couldn't afford the main first thing Tommy said, oh, so okay. that's why you kicking it up to the Irish. And he, she was like, how do you know that? He said, I know a payment I, 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 envelope. Yeah. Else <laughs> Tommy wants to help Gloria get from underneath for them. And Gloria was like, no, I got myself into this mm -hmm. and I'll get myself out. And by the way, there's something about me that you need to know. What she was trying to tell Tommy that she is messing with Vic, but we see while they're inside the bar talking, we can see Vic looking through the window Just and seeing it. And Vic was like, this and that. So now Vic know that Tommy is messing with his girl. So now we see Tommy over there with JB over at the grandma's house. Remember the grandma's house from last episode where Tommy went to roll up but come to find out grandma is in a home, right? So um, Tommy comes over there to give JB more money. And JB was like, mm, you know, what's this all about? And JB went on to um, explain to him, like, I don't know what it feels like to have a brother. And Tommy was like, but I do. And I was well, like, here's yeah, another moment <laughs> yeah. where you don't pull that our heartstrings because now we... Tommy going through it. Yeah, yeah. JB ended up pulled out the VHS tape and um, JB was like, this is like, all the cards are starting to make sense because I've always wondered who the heck is this? 
and Tommy was able to see him in a VHS tape with his mom, Kate. So JB was like, I don't understand how a mom could, you know, do that to a son, like just leave a son behind and stuff like that. So at this point, JB opens up and tells Tommy that he has a 16 year old that he hasn't seen in 14, 14 years. years. I was like, because don't when worry. the child was two years old is when JB came out as gay and the mom was like, oh hell no. Nah. She cut all ties with him and refused to let him see his son. Yeah. He said he tried to keep up for a while and whatnot, but then he just lost contact with the son. So in the midst of him talking to Tommy, we see his son is going to the spot where he's going to take his gun back. And we see that the son actually has a picture, which is D-Mac is his son. And we see that D-Mac knows that he just, at the beginning of the episode, just shot up his father's bar. So I'm trying to figure out now if... If D-Mac feels bad about it and just caught up in the game, or he just doesn't care, or there, or he's trying to seek revenge because he feel like his father That's left him. That's what I think. So, but we gonna but we gonna find out though. At the end of the episode, we see that Tommy goes back to that place that he saw that had the lease sign on at the beginning of the episode, and he ended up paying the guy cash for this apartment. We believe that he got this apartment because this is going to be where he's going to set up shop at yep. because he opened up the map. So he's basically mapping everything out. Then we see that he goes back and pays a visit to, to Liliana. Boy, he can find her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she can find him. So she finds him and she lets him know when we was in New York, Julio, y'all remember Julio, yeah. gave me money so that I can leave. I was here in Chicago having a good life. And then all these and people kept saying that it's this white guy in a mustang in a, in a blue mustang. So I thought that you came back to finish me off. So they got to fighting and fighting and Tommy was trying they to fight and fighting. Yeah, they, yeah, and um that girl that girl can take a licking and keep on I ticking said, Tommy, too, I feel some kind of weight. Some I mean, on her yeah, and she was getting up from every last one of them. I said, I feel some kind of weight. So so Tommy went to try to smash her face in with his foot and he ended up smashing into the floor and he find a brick a of coat. A lot. With a spotter on the top of it. So now we're trying to figure out, is this Jimenez, Jimenez. Cortez? Because you remember, remember that's what they that, had. that car had that little spotter on it. It wasn't exactly like it, but it was, it was a, yeah. And if her and Tommy now are going to work, because she was like, it's so good to run into old friends. So is Tommy going to work with her? So with all that said, I think the episode was really good. Like, it was really good. I'm glad that they built on the storylines that they slowly brought us into on the last episode. Because the last episode was like, it's slow, but where are we going with this and you got the diamonds and we knew that diamond won't go stay out the game long it right. was gonna be by force that he was gonna be put back in this position but i like his position because he's a thinker yes and i'm like where are we going but i think we're gonna go so many places and experience so many things with that crazy a time in <sighs> chicago and i'm here for it yeah i am here for it hopefully this is the power that we all been waiting for like oh the, it is the power we all been like waiting the, for. the writing is, is going to yeah. yeah this is the one we've been waiting for yeah. we've, been, we've been waiting for this yeah, so far the, yeah, man, the writing is, the is one. on point mm -hmm. so y'all get down in the comments let us know what y'all think about the nice episode mm -hmm. and we're gonna catch y'all in the next power video straight from the va the dirty, dirty two up two down holla boom